Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. I'm pumping out a whole bunch of videos today because I have vacation this week, and I have a couple of hours to spend at the range. There's nobody out here. So for me, I'm just going to have some fun. So what is this beautiful shotgun that I'm holding? Well, a few videos back, maybe, I don't know, a few months ago at this point in time, I put a video up that I had purchased an old police trade-in high standard, and it's basically like a K120 or something like that, 18-inch barrel. I don't even know what the magazine tube holds as far as rounds go, um, but I picked this up from my local Cabela's. This was basically a extremely beat-up high standard 12-gauge riot shotgun, and I got it for what I thought was a pretty good price, which is why I bought it. I love the old military and police style with this corn gob foregrip. Kind of looks like the Persuader version of the Mossberg that I have. Um, I haven't even fired this thing yet. And the story is when I bought it that the uh, the guy at Cabela's told me there was a whole pile of police trade-in shotguns. These, actually this was the only one that was like this. Uh, and then a bunch of um, police Magnum Remington 870s. And I almost bought one of those, but they were in such bad shape. I mean, all beat up. The buttstocks look like they've been smashing people's heads with them, not using them for shooting. And the rubber was all gooey, uh, I guess because of the humidity or something down in Puerto Rico where they came from. They said that they just don't last very well. So instead, I bought this high standard riot. Now, I'm going to do a couple things with this today. I've never fired this at all, and I wanted to just kind of come out and kind of go lightly on it see how it functions being that it is from the 1960s and it doesn't even have a front bead sight on it I bought one um, from Numrich Gun Parts and it didn't fit and the threads are all boogered up in the barrel so realistically it has no front sight whatsoever but this thing has the smoothest action ever you just drop the mag release and the slide goes down so I mean, it's about as smooth as you can possibly get on the action on a shotgun. And again, I'm using Lucas Extreme Gun Oil in this thing. It went from being a very smooth gun to uh, it basically... I mean, you can basically rack this itself just by dropping the mag slide and racking the chamber. So, I'm going to try something today, though. So, I have, if I can find it, this little Opsol Shorty Shotgun Shell Adapter that's made for a Mossberg 500. And even though this is not a Mossberg 500, I want to try and see if I can shoot these little Federal Shorty shot shells out of my high standard. So I haven't even tried this adapter in my Mossberg 500 yet. From what I understand, you basically drop it down here in the magwell. And again, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try it anyway. Of course, I don't even know which way it goes in. So may not work. I'm going to try it out anyway. Yeah, it looks like it might work. It kind of fits a little bit odd in the chamber because it's made for a Mossberg 500. Oh, I don't think it's going to work. It keeps popping out. But I'm going to try it anyway. So let me open up these shorty shot shells. And this is another first for me because I bought a whole ton of these shot shells just because I think they're wicked cool. Whether or not they're going to work well in this gun I don't know. Let's just start off by putting two of them in there. And again, little tiny shot shells. You guys have probably seen these. These are the Federal version. Uh, Aguila makes some as well. I just happen to like the Federals because they're really cheap. They're like $7 for 10 rounds. Oh, and the Opsol adapter got stuck. Something got stuck. Well, that's already a failure. Yeah, for some reason it does not like, so watch what happens when I try to cycle this. It goes into the chamber and it gets stuck because apparently either I have the adapter in upside down, which is entirely possible, or the shells just won't work um, with the Opsol in this gun. But let me try turning the adapter around and see if that makes a difference. I really don't know how this thing goes in here, to be honest. It's probably upside down again. Um, let me Now I got it stuck. Well, I got one in the chamber, so let's go ahead and try it anyway Safety off Hey, that thing felt great 
and it didn't eject it. So the Opsol adapter definitely does not work in the high standard. So instead of ruining it, I'm just going to have some fun with some of these little shot shells. It will put them in the chamber. So again, I'm like uh, Paul Harrell where I like trying stuff out and trying to figure out if it really has a place that's useful in any firearm. These again, reduced recoil, they have a fair amount of kick to them. I also have some, uh, let me put the safety back on here. I have some Cellier and Bellet or whatever you want to call them. Uh, these are number one buck, uh, two and three quarter inch shells. So just for a comparison. This is a number one buck. I think it has 12 number one buck pellets. And this is the shorty shell that I'm shooting right now, which is a 15 pellet four, number four buck. So there's a big difference in the size of the shells and the loading as well. So I'm gonna shoot one of the shorty shells and show you how it recoils. Then I'll put one of the other shells in and show you how it recoils. So this is the Federal shorty shell. Not too bad, and I can actually see the pellets hit my berm at 100 yards, so they're going pretty far, and I mean, the spread at 100 yards is probably like 25 feet with that many pellets. So let's go ahead and do the other ones for a comparison. Wow. I forgot how much buckshot hurts. So that's a number one buck. This is a double lot buck, royal, nine pellet, traditional that you would have. Uh, so let's see how the recoil is on this thing. Ow. Yeah. I forgot how much uh, shotguns can hurt when you really shoot them a lot. And I'm not a wimp. I just don't like getting punched in the shoulder. So the shorty shells are a lot more fun to shoot. There's really no recoil on them. It's more like shooting a 20 gauge. However, if they don't cycle in your shotgun, they're not really much good. So let's go ahead. I'm going to load up with uh, some of these number one buck. Put one in the chamber, safety on. And I don't know how many this mag tube holds. There's one, two. Wow, this thing is buttery smooth. Three, four, five, six. It's six plus one when you have a two and three quarter inch shell. So it's only one shot more than a standard Mossberg 500 in the same 18 inch barrel configuration, but it's an 18 inch barrel with one more shot in it versus a 20 inch barrel with two or three more shots in it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to blow through some, uh, what is this again? Number one buck, 12 pellet, number one buck. <laughs> oh man. You can't get much more fun than that. If you really pull this thing into your shoulder well, and I'm shooting this like it's meant to be shot, I'm not using the sights because I don't have any. Again, the tip of the barrel, there's no sight on it whatsoever. So I'm shooting this just like you would a normal uh, police riot shotgun where you're not using the sights whatsoever. So that was that was pretty rapid fire on my, uh, my buckshot there. I have a few more on my my little shell holder here, and I gotta say, I'm I'm very impressed with this. I think I paid, it's either 199 bucks or 219 bucks for this thing. It was relatively cheap, uh, and I'm very, very happy with the quality of the gun and the function of the gun. Obviously, it's a basic, simple 12 gauge pump shotgun. What's really gonna go wrong with it anyway? But again, high standard Riot 12 gauge. I think it was a K120 or a K1200 was what they denoted it as. I'm not sure of the year. This one literally says high standard Hamden, Connecticut, and it says proof tested two and three quarter inch chamber, but it doesn't actually have a model number on it. So this is very similar to the gun Steve McQueen used in the movie, The Getaway. Not really why I bought it, but it's another cool fact. So here we go again. Yeah, the shockwave was hard enough that it blew my phone over. What did I do here? Didn't, uh... 
I really like those uh, number one buck. I dropped one shell here. Let me grab that. Hold on, let me put this down so it's safe. One more of these number one buck. I think that Cellier and Bellet number one buck is like my new favorite ammo. That stuff, this stuff, it's uh, $6 a box at my local shop where I buy most of my firearms from. And I gotta say, that stuff is way, way softer on the shoulder than a double lot buck. I'm probably gonna buy like eight or 10 more boxes of this stuff just because it's that good. So I'll put a couple more of these shorty ones through it. I wish I could load them through the magazine. Oh man, there's like, it's like shooting a 22 with these shorty shells. They're a lot of fun, but they don't cycle in the gun. So what good is it really? And they are making it out to 100 yards. I mean, definitely they're not hitting with nearly as much authority as you would have with the standard double lot buck. But I can see them hitting the berm at 100 yards, so they're pretty neat. And again, if you get pretty fast at loading, you can shoot pretty quick, even single loading these things. And again, I'm not a marksman. I'm not a professional shooter. I just do this for fun. I do like to practice drills like this just so I can be proficient with guns. Uh, went in backwards. So probably not good even single loading these things. I would definitely not bet my life on those shorty shells, at least not in this high standard uh, riot shot. So there you have it. High standard K120 or K1200 riot gun, 18 inch barrel, has a six shot magazine tube, one in the chamber, and it is buttery smooth action. If you ever get a chance to pick one of these up, I highly recommend it. It is not a slam fire like an Ithaca 37. You still have to pull the trigger every time, so. Click. So you can hear the reset and then the click for the, the hammer again. So it is not a slam fire like an Ithaca Model 37, but this is just a fun, awesome shotgun. I just use it for home defense and stupid videos like this when I can just get out and plink with stuff. I'll probably give this to somebody that's never shot a shotgun to shoot so they can, you know, put some double lot buck through it and really feel what a man should feel when he's shooting these things. So that's another short video from Cranky Gun Reviews. Thank you very much. Have a great day. God bless America. And always make sure that you support your two-way rights. Exercise your rights to own and use a firearm as much as you can. Have a great day from Cranky Gun Reviews.